It's been a while, but I'm finally back on the clock and I can't wait until Girl Define sees this look. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode eight, The Masquerade Ball of Canada's Drag Race season three. Today our Canadian queens were challenged to serve three looks. Mask for mascara, gender bending drag, which I don't think I'm familiar with. Incognito, which honestly was really vague to begin with and not many queens nailed, but turned out to mean something to the effect of not looking like a drag queen and then revealing to a drag queen. And finally, a high drag garment they had to construct there that screams. Mas Masquerade Belle of the Ball! Based on the mask they were assigned by Miss Vivian Vanderpuss. And girl, I've got one thing to say. There were two seamstresses and three hot glue gun divas and the hot glue gun girls were fighting. So we'll be breaking down all 15 looks from the ball and ranking the queens from rottest rat to hottest hot. So you better buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride. And I've already started the fair. Can you imagine if I was charging you to watch these? It's not like this is fashion photo review. Oh! <laughs> First up, and at the bottom of my list tonight, we have Kimmy Couture. And firstly, I want to point out the really sweet emotional moment that she had with her mother's video message. Kimmy's mom shared that when other people asked her how she accepted her drag queen daughter, the answer was simple. She just loves her kids. And that's the energy every queer kid wishes their parents had. So she is so lucky. And oh my God, Kimmy looks just like her mother. And Kimmy's first look in the Mask for Mascara category is my personal favorite of her three tonight. I like this because it was very different for Kimmy. Remember, we been seeing tons of bra and panty kind of futuristic Moogler woman type of silhouettes. So this was extremely refreshing to see her do her powerful little runway stomp in. I loved the pants. I loved that it was still like in that Kimmy couture way that she likes to wear things where she's showing off a little bit of skin. And I have the hair both on her head and facial to meet the brief was stunning. This look is hot. Kimmy's second look though I struggled with a little bit. She comes out as a blank anonymous profile square that you would find on an app like let's say Grindr and then she tosses it aside and reveals she's in this club kid look, which she says is serving club kid meets neon colors kissing together. <laughs> And she says that she's serving versatility, which I agree with. This look and her first, very different from the Kimmy Couture runway library catalog that we have seen thus far in the competition. And in that regard, I loved seeing this second part of this look. However, for the brief of Incognito, whatever joke or theme she was reaching for, I think didn't land. The judges on the panel didn't get it, and I still didn't really get it even when she explained it to them. The club kid look from Kimmy, I would give a hot, it's cute. but. For the category, this whole thing was confusing and a little bit of a and finally, we have her masquerade look. This was inspired by the pink feathery mask that Vivian hands Kimmy at the beginning of the episode. And zoom in on Kimmy's face because that tells you all you need to know about how she felt about that mask. And girl, I agree. And I say that primarily not because I don't like the color pink. I quite like it. But I think it's harder to make that hot pink tone look elegant or bell of the ball -y, if you will. Especially when combined with bright yellow. Hi, me. This color combo for me was reading tropical, lounging by the cabana in the middle of the summer, maybe you're going for a swim, and I just did not get Masquerade Ball at all from this. And it was super, super bold of her, I might add, to basically recreate what Chaos got sent home for in the last design challenge. Unfortunately for Kimmy, the only thing this look masqueraded around as tonight was a rot. But I did actually assign a total of 10 flames to each queen's design look to properly weight this one as being more important in the overall challenge of this ball. So I here, for example, gave Kimmy just one hot flame for the brief and two for the construction. I don't think the shape and silhouette of what she created was bad. And second to last in my ranking list tonight, I have Giselle Lullaby, which might be a little controversial. I'm curious to know what y'all thought about her looks. Giselle was, of our final five here, the one of two seamstresses left in the competition. And they were trying to play up this narrative of how much she was helping all the other queens, but there wasn't really a lot of footage of her actually helping the other queens very much. She would give some advice, but then not do anything for them, which was a great strategy. But I'm saying this to point out, it seems like they were trying to overemphasize that she was just so busy working on other people's stuff that she didn't get to finish her final look. However, that didn't seem like the reality at all. Her first look, mask for mascara. Mm. 
I don't want the mask. I don't want the mascara. I don't want the boat that this sailor came off of. She says she's giving a little John Paul Gaultier fantasy, which I see the nod to. However, I think the execution was not great. This reads as three completely different looks that she's just haphazardly put together. And the fact that there's no cohesion between these three very different garments she has on her body really was distracting. My eye did not know where to go. And she did meet the gender bending brief of this category, but she appeared to have left her taste at home. This look is a rat. Look what I just remembered I had. <gasps> Oh my god. Kiki Cannibal, eat your heart out. And her incognito look was also a bit of a shipwreck for me. And that's mostly because it was bizarre and confusing more than it was anything else. She comes out as Curious Georgina or something. I don't know. She's narrating this like shy schoolgirl type of character who doesn't know where she's at or what she's doing. Sounds like me every day of my life. And then she reveals to be a drag queen. And first, let's go ahead and give the girl some kudos, some praise, maybe even a letter grade A. For how the transformation occurred on the runway. But the two looks for me just weren't my favorite things. It felt like neither were fitted properly. And kind of like Kemi, I was also missing the why. So no, I didn't like these looks, but I can respect the design artistry that went into executing this type of transformation. So I will give this a very soft hot. And Gisela is someone who has been doing super well on the runways this season. So it did surprise me to see her lack of attention to detail on these first two looks. But does she get the redemption with her seamstress skills in that final look? Kind of yes and kind of no. She walked out and I was gagged, gooped, bound and chained. I was shook and shaking and crying. She is the main event of the masquerade party from at least the waist up. For meeting the brief of masquerade ball, I gave this look all five hot flames. But in the other part of my evaluation tonight, I gave the construction only two because as the magic of seeing the wow factor from the waist up wears off as she walks down the runway, you start to see that the bottom half is quite plain and not just plain plain but extremely unfinished. There's not a hem in sight on the bottom of this dress skirt and it's literally like tattered and falling apart as she walks down the runway. She is creative though, I'll give her that because I think she tried to play that off by leaving her slipper to do a little Cinderella moment thing. Making a nod possibly at how Cinderella at the stroke of midnight has her dress turned back into the tattered rags that it once was. Miss Giselle thought she was clever. Overall this look is hot, but in the construction category it's a and next up, we got Vivian Vanderpuss, who receives a beautiful message from her dad telling her that she is gonna win this drag race. 100%. No one tell him. It was a beautiful video. And Vivian here being the last other seamstress in the competition, I also had high hopes for. But pitter patter, let's get at her and break these looks down. Mask for mascara. This was interesting. In fact, so interesting that I really fell in love with the look. It was giving Little House on the Prairie, Judy Garland, Wizard of Oz meets Dungeon in the Nightclub. And I liked how she contrasted those really soft pastel colors colors with a material and cut and silhouette that is typically a little more risque. I did not at all agree with the judges going so hard on this one. I think she deserved a little more credit here. This look was hot. Her incognito look though, I think will be very divisive among people. She goes from, as she says, being Peter Pastrami to Tina. How do you say that? Tagliatelle? I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Woo! My Italian grandma rolling in her grave. Ah! Anyways, Vivian had a whole three course meal of a story of who these characters were and how they were transforming, but girl, I wasn't into it. The chef look was just a chef look. Just like my taxi driver look is just a taxi driver look. I wouldn't wear it on the RuPaul's Drag Race runway. The only thing I was getting from what she was doing on the runway was ratatouille to cloudy with a chance of meatballs, but I didn't know why. But because the construction was good and the reveal happened and she had two different looks, I'm gonna give her looks in this category a safe hot. And for her final look, she creates a masquerade ball garment that is inspired by the beauty beautiful black and solar mask. And because I know how creative and interesting of a drag performer Miss Vivian is, as we've seen on the show, I was a little disappointed when she came out in this outfit. And I think Brad said it best while he was walking through and talking to the girls in the workroom. He told Vivian she needed to look like the guest of honor, not the performer of the party. But actually though, I wouldn't say this look was either of those things. It was more waiter at the party serving hors d'oeuvres. It's always a bold choice to do a pant or a suit, especially a three-quarter calf pant. The crotch was a little too low. The cut on the calf was not masquerade ball. And I think she missed a huge opportunity to really lean into those design elements that she started off with, like the asymmetrical shoulder and coattails. So for her two point categories, I gave meeting the brief two flames, so kind of a rot. And the construction three, because I don't think the fit was perfect. And I do think she missed some opportunities with the design elements, but she did still make a blazer and pants that had hems and looked finished. 
watched. And next up, a lovely first alternate in our rankings tonight. We have Jada Shada Hudson. And I'll be honest, girl, I was nervous. I was sweating boots because I love this queen. But that last is... <laughs> It was revolutionary. It was truly one of a kind. Her first look, Mask for Mascara. She comes out, she says she is giving a pimp daddy from the Bronx. I <laughs> loved everything about this look. The stoning on this pinstripe suit, phenomenal. And I loved how she was fully playing into this character. It is a ball and she is giving us ball culture. She's giving us the realness of the character that she is giving. She had surprises and little gags at the end of the runway. She showed off her grill. And I love this look at first sight because it reminded me of the Penguin character from the Tim Burton Batman movies when he's in his pinstripe suit and he's got that like umbrella weapon thing and maybe that wasn't a reference point in the design of this outfit at all and she just was a pimp daddy from the Bronx which is great and this look is hot. Her second look though was not so much a blockbuster as her first. She comes out <laughs> carrying a mirror in a black ballerina tutu kind of dress. And then <gasps> this look has a reveal. Never would have guessed it. It reveals to a mirrored dress. And again, what the hell was this runway category supposed to be? I don't even know if I can blame her for this or any of the queens for this category because all of them were just so different and strange. But this look considered as incognito or transforming into a drag queen, none of that really makes any sense at all. And for this looks transformation message to be so lost in translation, the two individual looks needed to at least be show stopping and they really weren't but i will say jada had so much fun on the runway and that's the thing about jada she is oozing charisma but mirror mirror on the wall this look is a rot and thank god in hell Louis, she comes to this finish line strong this masquerade ball dress is very simple but it is very on brief. She's the show. Look at this tool thing wrapped around her body. She says, look at me. And that beautiful black and gold pattern shawl coat thing that she has created to drape over the dress in the back, a great contrast to the plain black color of the dress and matching the mask very well. And as we know, she is not necessarily a seamstress. She did after all sew this dress's head hole closed the first time around. <laughs> But let's give the congratulations this girl deserves for making this simple look look so elegant. I also want to shout out the cool little hoop skirt thing that she did at the bottom of her dress. Very neat. The one thing I would have changed about this look, which the judges pointed out, was her choice of fabric for the base of the dress. It was a jersey knit and there was no shine or sheen to it. But again, she had enough other design details integrated into this garment that definitely made up for that fact. So in both categories, I gave Miss Jada four hot flames. And the very tippity top of our rankings tonight, we have Miss Fierce. Delicious. Girl, she has had the best runways of this entire competition. Hands down, book closed, gates locked. And tonight was no exception. And the funny thing, again, the thing I love about watching Miss Fierce Alicious, she knows how to make good TV. She knows damn well that she's gonna be able to turn out a cute dress for the masquerade ball, for example. However, she's seen asking every judge and every contestant, will you make my dress? Will you make my dress? I'll give you $5,000 if you make my dress. Like this girl is playing the long game, psyching the other bitches out. Anyways, let's get into the looks. Mask for mascara? <sighs> This is beautiful. This is an homage to Matthew Anderson, who, if you'll remember, was a longtime collaborator with Miss RuPaul Charles herself. Back in the day, Matthew was doing Ru's looks for Drag Race, and one day, he mysteriously disappeared. And there are tons of rumors online, believe what you want to believe. Some say he is dealing with an illness. Some say that him and Ru had a falling out. And some say he just simply wanted to live out of the limelight. What the truth is, we may never know. Matthew is a queer icon that played in this gender bendy space a lot himself. And to see Fierce do this homage to Matthew in such a beautiful way, I just think it shows Fierce is thinking about a lot more than she lets on. And importantly, is delivering references and cultural moments in a ball. Thank you. This look is hot. But if y'all aren't feeling toasty from that look, check out this next one, Incogshito. The way she ate this ball up. The way she ate this ball the way she ate those balls. She says her first look is celebrating her heritage and Cape Verdean culture with an African dress. She says she's giving gorgeous village girl off to the marketplace. This look is stunning. The pattern, the colors, the silhouette that she has created here. And what the hell does this dress have anything to do with Incogshito? I have no idea. I was even more confused when I saw the reveal. But in the reveal, she turns into Josephine Baker, who, quick history lesson, is regarded as the most famous black female star in the world 
ever. She was an American born performer who expatriated herself and made a career for herself over in Europe, primarily in France. The look that Miss Fierce is doing an homage here to is her famous bananas look. And this look was a regular part of her performances, which apparently evolved over time to have like spiky pieces on it. I'm sure you're starting to see the metaphor of what the bananas might represent. And now these relatively salacious performances were used to subvert the male gaze and liberate herself, not only as a woman, but a black woman in a world that was, and sadly often in many places still is very much against. Anyway, she's iconic. This was her banana look. This is Fierce doing the banana look. It's a beautiful homage, a beautiful look, and such a gag to go <laughs> from her like Cape Verdean culture to Josephine Baker. So props to you, mama. This look is hot. Now let's move into her final look. Overall, it is very simple, but very elegant. As far as me in the brief though, is this as opulent as I expect a masquerade ball garment to be? Not necessarily. I want a little more show and high drama from this because I was getting a little more rich socialite goes to a charity event than I was truly masquerade. I ended up giving Fierce four hot flames in both the construction and meeting the brief categories because she was so close on meeting the brief and the construction, while she didn't really, I think, push herself like she could have, she delivered a look that was arrestingly beautiful on the runway. And she added some really nice delicate details like the chains on the back of her dress that she also added to the mask. She literally said this mask is boring, I'm gonna spice it up. Love that. And hey, she's come a long way from that hemorrhoids dress. This look is hot. So Miss Fierce takes the win this episode, which I agree with, she's at the top of my list. Her looks were phenomenal. But in the bottom two though, we have Kimmy and Vivian. Now, Kimmy, I expected. She was at the bottom of my ranking list as well across her three looks, but Vivian was closer to the middle for me. I mean like one point away from being tied in the bottom with Giselle for me, but still I think she had a slightly better showing overall than Giselle. Vivian's downfall though, I think from the eyes of the judges tonight was Mediocrity. Nothing she did across her three looks was necessarily interesting, groundbreaking, or different. Giselle, in contrast though, while her first two looks were not very good, had a third look that was, at least at first glance, breathtaking. The most opulent thing on the stage. It was a shame that the bottom half was not finished, but what she created in the top half was arguably better than any other complete look. And I think that execution is ultimately what kept her out of the bottom. So Vivian and Kimmy lip sync to Control Alt Delete, which I reacted to along with the runways over on my Patreon. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, access to exclusive videos, and access to the Busty Queen Discord server. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. But the short of it is, Kimmy is a great dancer. I mean, good God. Vivian though, I think held her own. The reason Kimmy won in my eyes was she gave a more dynamic performance while Vivian kind of did the same one, two, three while having a tight lip sync throughout the entire song. Overall, I'll say I enjoyed this ball. Ms. Fierce definitely made it worth watching, but I was a little confused about how we ended the episode and where the season is going next. It sounded like Brooke was saying the Queens next week are going to fight for the crown as the final four, but it's only episode nine and they're there's also going to be a 10th episode. So that could mean that they have a reunion scheduled as one of those? I don't know what's going on there. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. Hottest pots. In the Mask for Mascara category, I'm gonna give it to Miss Fierce. Incognito, Miss Fierce. And the Masquerade. The thing is, if I had to wear one of these looks, I would wear Giselle's, period. But I would ask her to finish the garment, of course. So if they were presented like they were presented unfinished, tattered on the bottom and stuff, I probably would go with Miss Fierce's look, which was complete, if maybe a little too simple. So I'm gonna give it to Miss Fierce. And I also asked my patrons over on patreon.com to put on their hottest hots. They've chosen Miss Fierce like I did for the first two categories and then Giselle Lullaby for the third. But let me know what y'all thought down in the comments below, who should have won, been in the bottom two, gone home, et cetera, et cetera. Wait, wrong season. That's all I've got for you today, and I'll end with an extra special shout out to Minnie Cooper, Sammy M, Samantha, and Lisa Litchfield, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hot tier. And eight in the individual, Alicia, Cyrus, Felicia, Frankie, Hector C. Mancas, Jeffrey, Joseph, Kyle Hermes, Laura, Louis Labrador, Ruff, Luke Peterson, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matto, Michelle Yorbell, Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, and Wheelie, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later, love ya, bye. Get in, loser, we're going hot erotic.